Hi everyone, this is Pseudo AI. Today I'd like to discuss an important topic regarding the negative impacts caused by AI. The prodigy of the artificial intelligence realm, ChatGPT, has become the envy of its contemporaries. Since its grand debut on November 30th, 2022, this wonderkind has demonstrated remarkable versatility, conquering the bar and medical licensing exams in the United States, crafting emails and melodies, constructing applications, and much more. The astonishing fact that it is accessible to the public without cost, you know, outside of GPT-4, has ushered in a new era of opportunities once believed to be beyond the grasp of AI. Nevertheless, its creators have faced scrutiny for the veil of mystery surrounding their training methods. Birthed by OpenAI, a Microsoft-supported enterprise, ChatGPT skyrocketed to become the fastest-growing consumer app globally within two months of its launch amassing over 100 million users by January. This meteoric rise inspired Microsoft to weave Bing search engine and Edge browser with the underlying technology of ChatGPT, aiming to enhance user experience. Following OpenAI's success, Google introduced its own AI contender, dubbed Bard, following a preview of the platform in February. Meanwhile, in mid-March, China's technological titan Baidu unveiled their own response to the U.S. sensation, a platform named Ernie. However, both Bard and Ernie have experienced some initial hiccups as the fervor in the AI arena intensifies. While AI has been researched, developed, and utilized in a myriad of applications and industries for years now, it has seen a huge boom in popularity in everyday direct common usage because of OpenAI's ChatGPT. As the race for the biggest, best, most powerful AI ramps up, some believe the race is moving a bit too fast. A collective of tech figures, including Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, have urged AI labs to pause the development of powerful AI systems for six months, citing potential profound risks to society and humanity. Organized by the Future of Life Institute, the petition is a reaction to OpenAI's recent release of GPT-4, which spurred tech giants like Microsoft and Google to develop similar applications. The petition highlights concerns about the AI system's potential for biased responses, misinformation, and negative impacts on consumer privacy and job automation. The call for pause aims to allow independent experts to develop shared protocols for AI tools, ensuring safety beyond a reasonable doubt. The letter expresses discomfort with the rapid advancement in AI, asserting the current level of planning and management is inadequate. If a pause is not implemented, the letter recommends governments step in and create a moratorium. Tech giants OpenAI, Microsoft, Microsoft and Google, along with IBM, Amazon, Baidu, and Tencent, and various startups are at the forefront of the AI arms race. Meanwhile, governing agencies in China, the EU, and Singapore have started introducing early versions of AI governance frameworks. A SEMA4 report reveals that Elon Musk attempted to take control of OpenAI in 2018 but was rejected by co-founders Sam Altman and other founders. Believing that Google has surpassed OpenAI in the AI race, Musk withdrew from the company and rescinded a large donation contributing only $100 million of the promised $1 billion. OpenAI, founded in 2015 and backed by billionaires like Musk, launched GPT-1, the precursor to ChatGPT, in 2018 amid power struggle. Musk cited a conflict of interest with Tesla's autonomous driving AI development as a reason for his departure. In response to Musk's exit, OpenAI transitioned to a for-profit entity to fund its projects and adopted the Transformer AI training method, which requires constant data input and is costly. Microsoft invested $1 billion in OpenAI six months later, providing infrastructure and expertise that OpenAI lacked at the time. The partnership led to the creation of ChatGPT and the image generator Dolly with the latest language model, GPT-4, boasting 1 trillion parameters, at least. Musk has since questioned the legality of OpenAI's transformation from a non-profit to a $30 billion maximum profit company and paused OpenAI's access to the Twitter database. So is Musk generally concerned about AI or just salty about OpenAI's success without him? I'd wager probably a bit of both. But regardless, let's jump into something that is probably on everyone's mind. Is my job safe? from the clutches of AI? Researchers found that ChatGPT, when used by 444 writers, consultants, and HR professionals, particularly benefited low-skilled workers by reducing the time taken and narrowing the quality gap between their work and that of more skilled workers. Historically, increased productivity from automation has eventually led to more employment opportunities despite initial job displacement. Sectors such as education, legal services, and securities and commodities and investments may be disrupted by AI tools like ChatGPT. However, 
However, AI is expected to take over mundane tasks rather than replacing entire workforces, as it cannot replace non-routine and essential roles like lawyers in court or pharmacists selling prescribed drugs. Physical labor jobs and high-skilled roles are less likely to be disrupted by AI. Although AI automation may displace jobs and cause economic disruption, it is more likely to augment human work, improve existing jobs, and create new roles in related fields. It is crucial for organizations to provide support and retraining opportunities for those affected by job loss due to automation. An interesting paper published March 27, 2023, seeks to answer the very question of the impact caused by the advent of easily accessible and powerful large language models like ChatGPT and its competitors. Their analysis produced some interesting results, but bear in mind, like any studies, there are simplifying assumptions and limits to the veracity of their predictions. This isn't to say that there is some giant conspiracy weaving web of lies and deceit, just that this is science and nothing, no matter how well-meaning, is 100% certain. The authors themselves state the weaknesses of their study to display a level of transparency. I preface the results of this paper with this disclaimer so you all don't take the facts as pure fact. There is a level of uncertainty in what will actually happen, but this is a very educated guess. This study uses the ONET 27.2 database which contains information on over 1,000 occupations along with their respective detailed work activities and tasks. Their data set consisted of nearly 20,000 tasks and just over 2,000 detailed work activities. The results are represented by their definition of exposure, which is defined as the measure of whether AI would reduce the time required for a human to complete a task by at least 50%. With that in mind, they indicate approximately 19% of jobs have at least 50% of their tasks exposed to the capabilities of AI considering current AI capabilities and anticipated tools built upon on them, like apps, plugins, things that use AI technology at its core to provide a service. Conversely, it is estimated just 3% of US workers having over half the tasks exposed only considering AI's current capabilities and not factoring in any additional technologies and tools that will be developed. For the next discussion, keep the following rubric in mind. E0 corresponds to a minimal or no time reduction due to AI. E1 corresponds to a time reduction of a task by at least 50% and E2 takes into account the premise of E1 and adds the consideration of future software technologies developed upon the current AI capabilities to further enhance functionality. Based on this, they conduct their study based on the following weights. Alpha is equivalent to E1, which represents the lower bound of exposed tasks. Beta, which represents E1 plus half of E2, which represents the additional exposure due to deploying additional technologies leveraging AI. And lastly, Zeta, which is E1 plus the full amount of E2, representing the upper bound of exposure. So what does their study say? Well, on average, 15% of tasks within occupation level alpha are directly exposed to AI. When considering the effects of beta level exposure, this figure increases to over 30% for beta and 50% for zeta. Based on beta values, they estimate 80% of workers belong to an occupation with at least 10% of its tasks exposed to AI, whereas 19% of workers belong to an occupation with over half their tasks exposed. Keep in mind, Beta represents the introduction of technology leveraging AI, which will have some upfront costs and development time to be created, tested, and deployed. Interestingly, higher wage occupations tend to be more exposed, with several lower wage occupations also vulnerable. So, um, everyone here? So what skills are inversely and directly correlated to this exposure? Well, science and critical thinking skills are negatively correlated with exposure, whereas programming and writing skills show a strong positive correlation. This table here shows occupation in which AI will produce substantial reductions in time spent on large share of tasks, though that does not mean the tasks can be completely automated. So, you know, still jobs. This next table shows jobs that have little to no exposure, and as you may expect, anything involving physical labor, trade skills, construction, etc., are safe from the grasp of AI. So at this point, you may be asking yourselves, should I quit my job and become an electrician, or rejoice because you are already one? Here's what OpenAI CEO states on the matter. They're a little bit dubious and then someone tells them about something and then they're a little bit afraid and then they use it. I see how this can help me. I see how this is a tool that helps me do my job better. Although it has been true that the jobs change a lot, some jobs even go away. Human demand for new stuff, human creativity is, is limitless and we find new jobs. We find new things to do. They're hard to imagine from where we sit today. I certainly don't know. I think the future will have all sorts of wonderful new things we do that you and I uh, can't even really imagine today.
AI, if used properly, will be used as a tool to increase productivity and automate menial simple tasks for many jobs, not outright eliminating them. There will be jobs completely eradicated due to obsolescence, such has been seen before with the industrial evolution, automobiles, computers, the internet, all things we enjoy and take for granted now. The growing pains will exist, but new jobs will be created to support these new technologies and industries. That being said, that doesn't minimize the impact it will have in the short term or how rapidly the technology will take hold and and increase that effect. Speaking of which, what are some ways AI can be used improperly? And no, this is absolutely not a how-to guide on how to do anything harmful. Rather, a warning for all of you out there to be cognizant of the dangers and be alert of AI's potentially harmful use by bad actors. Phishing email creation, for one. One of the most alarming threats posed by ChatGPT lies in its ability to generate convincing phishing emails in various languages. Cyber criminals can now request marketing emails, shopping notifications, or software updates updates in their native language and receive a well-composed response in English. Traditionally, phishing emails have been identifiable by their misspellings and grammatical blunders. However, without these giveaways, detecting such malicious emails becomes increasingly challenging. Some theories suggest that these emails originate from regions where English is not the native language, while others propose that spammers intentionally include these errors to bypass spam filters. In any case, be careful about the information you read and respond to. ChatGPT's ability to provide coherent and logical responses allows us to mask inaccurate answers as credible insights from a single authoritative source. This could introduce misinformation into the intricate digital landscape in ways that may not be immediately apparent. ChatGPT relies on extensive data for training, and when the data contains inaccuracies or lacks information, the resulting responses will reflect these shortcomings. This can lead to the dissemination of incorrect information and may render the AI ineffective for addressing unique queries. Since ChatGPT cannot verify the accuracy of the information within its training data, it may generate false or misleading responses. For instance, the AI might be able to tackle a complex algorithmic problem while providing inaccurate results for a simple mathematical one. The U.S. Department of Commerce has recently initiated steps to develop new regulations on artificial intelligence, including technologies like ChatGPT. The Biden administration is seeking industry input to guide its approach in drafting rules on AI accountability. This move signals the White House's openness to establishing guidelines to ensure AI systems are legal, effective, ethical, safe, and trustworthy. As the U.S. is home to the significant AI innovators like Microsoft-backed OpenAI creator of chat GPT, there is an increasing need for regulatory oversight. However, the U.S. lags internationally in AI regulation. President Biden has called for strict limits on big tech, but progress has been hindered by political divisions among lawmakers. OpenAI has called for rigorous safety evaluations and comprehensive regulation of the sector. The National Telecommunications and Informative Administration, NTIA, will utilize the public input to draft a report on AI systems, informing the government's approach to AI-related risks and opportunities. The NTIA's AI Accountable Request for Comment aims to gather insights on policies that can facilitate AI audits, assessments, certifications, and other methods for establishing trust in AI systems. Similar to how financial audits instill confidence in a company's financial records, these mechanisms can help ensure an AI system's trustworthiness. Developing AI system accountability will require policy and governance much like financial accountability, but you know, hopefully actually accountable. <laughs> <laughs> unlike financial accountability. Well, that's a topic for another channel another day. The deadline to submit written comments in response to the request for comment is June 10th, 2023, which is 60 days from the publication date in the Federal Register. All comments will be made publicly accessible at this following web address. Respondents should address the questions posed in the request for comment, linking their input to the request for comments, pillars, and questions. It is not necessary to respond to every question. Comments should be typed, double-spaced, and signed and dated by the filing party or their legal representative. I hope all this information proves helpful in educating yourselves in AI risk aversion. Now, this is not to proclaim AI is bad and should be banned. It has huge upsides and can revolutionize our world in very positive ways. But with any technology, it can have unforeseen harmful effects, especially in the short term, as it is being developed and integrated into society before reaching a level of technological maturity. And it can be used in intentionally harmful ways. All we can do is be cognizant of those dangers, like with any other available tool and technology and keep ourselves well informed. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe and stay curious and alert. See you all in the next video.